the German Empire would be officially unified in 1871, but its roots can be traced back for over a thousand years, dating to the foundation of the Holy Roman Empire in the 9th century. But by the 18th century, the Holy Roman Empire's influence had significantly diminished, both politically and militarily. Within the empire, the territories enjoyed varying levels of autonomy, and governance structures ranged from independent kingdoms and duchies to autonomous free cities. The Habsburg dynasty, known for ruling over Austria and other lands, often held the imperial title since around the mid-15th century. However, the emperor's control over the individual states within the empire was severely limited, and on August 6, 1806, Emperor Francis II would dissolve the empire following the creation of the Confederation of the Rhine by French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte. After Napoleon's failed invasion of Russia, the French grip on the German princes would be loosened. In 1813, Napoleon mounted a campaign in the German states to bring them back under French control. The subsequent War of Liberation culminated in the Battle of Leipzig. The engagement resulted in a decisive victory for the coalition. As a result, the Confederation of the Rhine was dissolved, and Napoleon's army and his government collapsed, ending Napoleon's efforts in Germany. After Napoleon's defeat in 1815 at the Congress of Vienna, the major European powers would reorganize Europe into spheres of influence, and enlarged Prussia and much of what was the Holy Roman Empire were placed within Austria's sphere of influence. The Congress also established a confederation of German states under Austrian supervision. This would cause problems between Austria and Prussia as both had hoped to expand their influence across Germany. And after the Prussian army's significance in the Napoleonic Wars, Prussian leaders expected to play a pivotal role in the future of German politics. In March 1848, protests and demonstrations would erupt across Europe. In the German states, the protesters would seek greater political rights, constitutional reforms, and an end to censorship, and many would push an idea of a unified Germany as a sense of nationalism grew. Subsequently, in May 1848, the Frankfurt Parliament was elected to draft a constitution for a unified Germany. They would offer the title of emperor to the Prussian king, Frederick Wilhelm IV. He refused for a variety of reasons. Publicly, he replied that he could not accept the crown without the consent of the princes, but privately he feared opposition from the other German princes and military intervention from Austria or Russia. Internal divisions and resistance against the parliament from German monarchs impeded their efforts. By mid-1849, the revolutionary fervor had subsided, and conservative forces regained control, dissolving the Frankfurt parliament and temporarily thwarting the aspirations for a unified Germany. In 1850, after the dissolution of the Frankfurt Parliament, Frederick William would support the establishment of the Erfurt Union, a federation of German states excluding Austria. This limited union led by Prussia aimed to reduce Austrian influence over the German states. However, Austria and Russia applied diplomatic pressure forcing Prussia to abandon the idea during a meeting in Almutz. The Prussians, led by Radowitz and Frederick William, agreed to restore the German Confederation under Austrian leadership, which was considered a humiliation to many Prussians. As a result of the revolutions in 1848, Frederick William would appoint Otto von Bismarck as the first Prussian Chancellor. In 1849, Bismarck, along with Ruhn, Moltke and Radowitz all played critical roles in reshaping the balance of power in Europe. The first major episode in the path to German unification under Bismarck was the question of Schleswig-Holstein. In November 1863, Christian IX became the King of Denmark and the Duke of Schleswig, Holstein, and Lauenburg, holding these territories in a personal union. Shortly after, on November 18th, 1863, he signed the Danish November Constitution, which replaced the previous laws in the Kingdom of Denmark and the Duchy of Schleswig, Lauenburg, and Holstein. This move was seen by the German Confederation as a clear violation of the London Protocol of 1852, which had established a distinct status of the Kingdom of Denmark from the three independent duchies. The German Confederation used the ethnic composition of the region 
as a rallying cry, with the region being predominantly German. Efforts to have the November Constitution repealed through diplomatic means failed, leading to military action. On February 1st, 1864, Prussian and Austrian troops crossed the Eder River, initiating the Second Schleswig War. The Danes attempted to defend their country, but they were no match for the modern armaments of the combined Prussian and Austrian forces. The Prussians' use of the needle gun, a bolt-action rifle that allowed rapid fire while laying prone, gave them a significant advantage in combat. The war resulted in a quick victory for the combined Prussian and Austrian armies, and in the Peace of Vienna, both countries split control of Schleswig and Holstein. In 1866, Bismarck's second step towards German unification took place. During an assembly in Frankfurt, Prussia would directly challenge Austria over control of the German Confederation. Bismarck would dispute over the administration of Schleswig and Holstein, which was still under joint control. Around the same time, the Prussian representative in Florence entered a secret military alliance with the Italian government, agreeing to aid each other in a potential conflict against Austria. In April 1866, news of Italian troop movements near the Austrian border reached Vienna. This prompted Austria to begin mobilization in the southern regions. In response, Italy declared full mobilization. Despite calls for calm and rationality, Italy, Prussia, and Austria all rushed towards armed conflict. Before the war started, both the Austrian and Prussian governments sought to rally allies in Germany. Most of the southern German states sided with Austria against Prussia, while many of the northern German states joined Prussia. The Kingdom of Italy honored their alliance, hoping to gain Austrian-held Venetia and further the progress of Italian unification. On June 14, 1866, Prussia's forces, along with its allies, launched an offensive against Austria in what became known as the Austro-Prussian War. The main campaign of the war occurred in Bohemia. Prussian General Helmuth von Moltke had planned meticulously for the war. He rapidly mobilized the Prussian army and advanced across the border into Saxony and Bohemia, where the Austrian army was concentrating for an invasion of Silesia. There, the Prussian armies converged, and the two sides met at the Battle of Konigrads, where the Prussian army won a decisive victory against the Austrians. Hanover's army initially defeated Prussia, but within a few days were forced to surrender. The Prussian armies fought a campaign in the southwest, reaching Nuremberg and Frankfurt. The Austrians would be more successful in their war with Italy, defeating the Italians on land and at sea. However, the Italians managed to secure Venetia, in the Treaty of Vienna, signed on October 12th, Austria would surrender the province of Venetia to Italy and be forced to withdraw from German affairs. Following the North German Confederation Treaty pushed by Prussia, Schleswig and Holstein and Hanover, along with several other smaller German states were annexed by Prussia and turned into the North German Confederation. Following the adoption of the North German Constitution, which established a flag and governmental and administrative structures. In 1870, the Spanish throne, which had been left vacant since Queen Isabel II had been deposed in 1868, was offered to Prince Leopold, who was related to the Prussian royal house. The Prussian Chancellor Otto von Bismarck persuaded Leopold to accept the Spanish throne in June 1870. This move greatly alarmed France, felt threatened by a possible combination of Prussia and Spain directed against them. Leopold's candidacy was withdrawn under French diplomatic pressure. Bismarck would edit the French telegram, and on July 14th published the message called the Ems Telegram, which accomplished his purposes of infuriating the French government and provoking it into a declaration of war. Napoleon III declared war on Prussia on July 19, 1870. His military advisors assured him that the French army could defeat Prussia that such a victory would restore his declining popularity in France. Bismarck, for his part, saw war with France as an opportunity to bring the South German states into unity with the Prussian-led North German Confederation and build a strong German Empire. The Germans had superior numbers, since true to Bismarck's hopes, the South German states regarded France as the aggressor in the conflict and had thus sided with Prussia. An equally important asset was the Prussian army's general staff, which planned the rapid, orderly movements of large numbers of troops to the battle zones. 
The efficient German mobilization contrasted with confusion and delay on the French side. After suffering a check at the Battle of Worth on August 6, 1870, the commander of the French right wing, Marshal MacMahon, retreated westward. The same day, about 40 miles to the northwest, the commander of the French left wing, Marshal Bazin, was dislodged and fell back westward to the fortress of Metz. His further retreat was checked by the German right wing at the battles of Mars La Tour and Gravelot. On August 16th and 18th, respectively, he then took refuge behind the defenses of Metz indefinitely. The French right wing, commanded by Mac Mahoon and accompanied by Napoleon himself, attempted to relieve Bazin, but was itself encircled and trapped by the Germans at Sedan on August 31st. The following day, the Germans on the surrounding heights poured deadly artillery fire down on them. The Battle of Sedan was a disaster for the French. Trapped against the Belgian frontier, the French lost 17,000 men and were compelled to surrender on September 2nd. About 104,000 officers and men were taken prisoner, including both Napoleon and MacMahon. Since Bazin's army was still bottled up in Metz, the result of the war was virtually decided by the surrender. French resistance was carried on against desperate odds by a new government of national defense, which assumed power in Paris on September 4, 1870, and proclaimed the deposition of the emperor and the establishment of the Third Republic. On September 19, the Germans began to besiege Paris. Bazin's army capitulated at Metz with his 140,000 troops intact on October 27, and Paris surrendered on January 28, 1871. The armistice of January 28 would conclude the war, and the Treaty of Frankfurt would be signed on May 10, 1871. Germany would annex Alsace and half of Lorraine. Furthermore, France had to pay an indemnity of 5 billion francs and cover the costs of German occupation of France's northern provinces until the indemnity was paid. The culminating triumph of Bismarck's plans came on January 18, 1871, when the southern German states became officially incorporated into a unified Germany, and King William I of Prussia was proclaimed German Emperor at Versailles, the former palace of the French kings. The 1866 German constitution underwent some systematic adjustments to become the 1871 constitution of the German Empire. This new constitution introduced the imperial diet, which provided citizens with representation through suffrage for all males over the age of 25. Some German states retained their own governments, but the military forces of smaller states fell under Prussian control. The larger states like Bavaria and Saxony maintained some autonomy, but had to coordinate with Prussia. Although Bismarck had led the transformation of Germany from a loose confederation into a federal nation-state, he had not done it alone. The impact of the 1848 liberals and the importance of von Roon's military reorganizations and von Moltke's strategic brilliance all played a part in political unification. Thank you everybody for watching, please leave a comment letting me know your thoughts and consider liking and subscribing as it truly helps me make a better video for everybody and as always thank you for watching The Knowledge Show.